Redman Allen. Sideline. Second and six. That pass is caught. Quick tackle made by Younger. See where they spot the football right at about the first down. They mark it at the 45. And it is indeed a first down Montreal. S.J. Green getting a good run at the line of scrimmage and still pretty tight coverage. He has to work back to this football. Excuse me, Jamel Richardson worked back to this football. That's three second down conversion catches for the league leader. Richardson on the day up to 35 on the year. First down, Whitaker over the backfield. Bounces off Byron Parker and has another first down. Finished off by the middle linebacker, Jason Pottinger, who comes up limping. Now 77 yards to go. And and maybe more importantly for the Alouettes and their fans is that is that they're getting their offense going now. They get the back-to-back -back first downs. Damon Allen watching. They will stop the game to celebrate the accomplishment when Anthony Calvillo throws for 77 more yards. First down, big to Whitaker, and Calvillo does toss it. And complete, there's some extra yards. And another Montreal first down, the catch made by S.J. Green. Now good patience here by Calvillo, just gets outside of the pocket. Looked like he had lots of room to go ahead and run, something he doesn't do very often, just one carry per game, basically, throughout the season. He finds S.J. Green, drops it to him, and lets him get the yards after the catch. Well, the Alouettes have marched it to the Argo 15, first and 10. Brandon London has checked back into the Alouette offense. Five receivers set. Whitaker stays in. Going flat with the catch. Driven back. He's going to end up losing yards as Lynn J. Schill was there defensively. Basically, worst case scenario for for. Brian Bratton who you know if he goes down there he gets forward progress and probably four or five yards but because he be, was able to regain his balance and that just he just does that by instinct really not his fault but he doesn't get any of that forward progress and it's actually now second and, and more than 10 but the Owls can get a first down before scoring so it's second and 14 back at the 19 yard line Pressure on, Calvillo steps up, he'll take off, he's going to run it in, touchdown, Anthony Calvillo has his first of the year. That's no way to set a passing record. His focus is on this game and the race for first place in the East Division and it, that proves it right there that that is more important than a record that we all know will fall as long as he stays on the field healthy. And what a pump fake to freeze the defense when he gets out of that pocket. Finds the opening and looks fast. 19-yard run, his longest run of the year, 20. Doesn't take off much. It's Cleveland for the first time, right the extra point. And the Alouettes have claimed the lead here with 4 11 to go, third quarter. Let's show you how that pump fake is going to influence linebacker Jason Pottinger, who's going to drop in the defensive coverage here. And then as Anthony Calvillo steps up, and, and this pump fake right here gets him drawn right into the middle. He thinks the ball's going in that side. That opens up the lane for Calvillo to run and shows pretty good speed. Hey, Damon Allen's here. Why not show <laughs> off a little there bit? There you go. Sixty-five yards away, a high short kick, and brought down at the forty-yard line. Taking a big deep breath, has a bruised sternum because of the hit he took.
good last week against the Bombers. His two girls and wife Alexia were in the stands, but now downstairs, just in case. <laughs> And I'm not sure the girls are really too concerned about whether dad gets another football to put on that mantle. And the Argos offense has been stuck in this third quarter, just 24 yards. There's a positive play on first down as Billy Parker runs Chad Owens out. Well, that's been the issue, Chris, and you mentioned it in the first half, that the time of possession advantage when these two teams play is, is so lopsided in Montreal's favor that so sooner or later that defense will get worn down. I mean, they have to put some first downs together at least to give their defense a little bit of a rest, if anything. And first down production like that will go a long way towards doing that for the Argos. Chad Owens has his fourth catch of the day. It sets up second and less than a yard. Oh, oh, and the Argos will think it to Boyd, and Giles in trouble. And, well, he was going to be dropped by Billy Parker, but a flag comes out, and Parker will be called for either horse collar or a face mask on the play. You know, and that's an option. Major foul, face mask. Montreal, number 17. 15 yards from the original point of last scrimmage. Wow. Automatic first down. You know, that, that bails out the Argos, that penalty on, on Billy Parker, because I, I just don't get that call. I, I know it's an, it's an option for Stephen Giles on that type of play, but when you're, when you're a yard away from a first down and you absolutely have to start moving the chains to give your defense a rest and you pull the ball and take a loss, I mean, it's barely a face mask call, so the Argos very fortunate they got that call. I just don't get it. Uh, why do you don't give the ball to Corey Boyd in that case? Big break for the Argos. There's that zone read, and Giles takes off. Stephen Giles with a feet first slide around the 25-yard line. Giles came into the game with 249 yards in just four games, so he can take off. On his last three, an 8.4 yards average, and, and Jamie Elizondo, the offensive coordinator, if he heard what I just said, he would have said, this is why we run that play. <laughs> because when we get Steven Giles outside, he can pick up big yards like this. But my, my argument would remain the same. Second and one or less, I'm giving it to Corey Boyd. That's my best chance. 19-yard play. The air goes not threatening, and there's swing it Owens with the catch. And a first down, Chad Owens is dropped at the 12-yard line. Deandre Dix with the tackle, but for the first time in the second half, the Argos moving the football. How many times have we seen a quarterback throw this play, which is which should be a, a real pretty easy throw, but throw it a little bit behind the intended target, and when he does, it forces a guy like Chad Owens to turn back and take his eyes off the downfield and where he can make the move. That ball put right in front of him so Chad Owens could keep his vision upfield and how to avoid the tacklers in front of him. At the 11, the Argos can make the first down without scoring. Here comes the heat. Into the end zone for the goal and out of his reach. Well, they've been sending a steady dose of pressure on Stephen Giles today, and that time it was Diamond Ferry. Pressure on Stephen Giles because Brandon Rideau wasn't open when he threw the football. And this time, Ferry very careful there. He's got to be careful not to go down a little bit lower. He gets any lower on Stephen Giles. He's drawing another penalty flag and will probably be on the bench in a hurry again. Second and ten. Off the edge, pressure into the end zone and through the back of the end zone. Greg Laburn was stride for stride with Spencer Watt. Guy we haven't talked about much, and, and a guy that I don't think started this football game, but comes off the edge here in John Bowman, a guy with eight sacks on the season, and he's going to provide some pressure. He comes in outside step and then comes on an inside move on Kaufman. Eight sacks of the year, two of them against the Argonauts. So the field goal unit has to come on for Toronto to cut this six-point lead in half. <laughs> Put 
Prefontaine makes it 22 19. This is our league, is brought to you by Nissan. And it's Anthony Calvillo on the marquee. And early this morning, this was his locker. Of course, the first always to arrive just after 9.30 this morning for a 1 o'clock kickoff and going over his playlist pregame. And then coming out and taking the field for warm-up for the Montreal Alouettes with his girls and his wife, Alexia, in the stands. And it's been his afternoon. He needs just over 70 yards to get there. He's got to like game day. Doesn't have to be here at 5.30. <laughs> well, they'll start at the 35. Room on the field for the drive to produce a record. Over the middle. What a cut in North. There's a big catch for Kerry Watkins up at midfield. That's going to cut into that 65 yards as they... Now we get real close, and it looked like Kerry Watkins here. He, he's really going to dig hard on this dig route. And all the receivers, as John Lou mentioned early on, would love to be the answer to that trivia question and catch that record-breaking football when Anthony Calville crosses the threshold. And they're running their routes hard right now to get open. 45 yards away as Watkins' grab is good for 20. And off inside, Whitaker. Five more. It was funny on the last series for the Alouettes, the record actually went backwards for four play or for four yards on that loss by Brian Bratton, making it hard on the old guy. <laughs> I was gonna say that's why I thought it was 70, and then it went down to 65. That big throw over the middle gets him that much closer. So we're getting there, and it and it's looks like it's gonna be the fourth quarter when Anthony Calvillo becomes the all-time leading passer. Final play, third quarter. Second and a long five. He's got Jamal Richardson. Still going. It might be right here. He's passed the ball. Anthony Calvillo is the all-time Canadian Football League and pro football passing leader. Thanksgiving Day 2011 history made at Percival Molson AC all time they are on their feet here in Montreal and a spectacular play by Jamel Richardson that will get well lost in the euphoria one of the great Canadian Football League records. Congratulations, man. The, the, the debate will go on as to who is the all-time best ever in the Canadian Football League. And I would say Anthony Calvillo is the number one, the best pure passer, the best pure pocket passer in Canadian Football League history. Nice touch by Jermaine Copeland to come over and congratulate his former teammate. And a guy who didn't want the game to be disrupted picked the perfect time, the final play of the third quarter. They were going to have to break anyway, but we're going to take time to salute a CFL and pro football all-time great. years all the adversity and now all time special video presentation upcoming here in Montreal 
Et maintenant, voici le décompte des cinq plus grands passeurs de l'histoire du football professionnel. And now, here's a look at the top five passers in pro football history. Au cinquième rang, Dan Marino. Who entered the season this offense, some of the option routes and various things. You know, changing the play on the second and nine and throwing sideline, and he has the record. Irving Flyer on the catch. Anthony, Dan Marino here. Congratulations on becoming pro football's all-time leading passer. If anyone knows what it takes to throw for that many yards, it's me. Good luck the rest of the season, Anthony, and go Alouettes. Au quatrième rang, Warren Moon. So it's the Eskimos ball once more on their 26. Moon wants to go up top again. There's pressure. He rolls left and delivers on the dead run to speedster Waddell Smith. Darrell Williams and yet another stop for the Cincinnati Bengals as Moon pumps fakes all day long. Throws to an open man and it's a touchdown. First of all, I want to congratulate you, Anthony, on a great career so far. 18 years of consistent football shows great longevity. You've been a champion three different times. But I want to give you a special congratulations on being the total yardage passing leader in the history of professional football. It's a record that I've held before, and I thought it was very special. Records are made to be broken, so you enjoy it while you have it. But congratulations on being that. What a great honor it is for you. Au troisième rang. Brett Favre. First and 10 from the 38. And Favre's pass is caught by Donald Driver. And there it is. Brett Favre has now passed for more yards in his career than any other quarterback in National Football League history. Au deuxième rang, Damon Allen. First and 10 from the 29. Allen takes the snap, rolls to his left, tosses underneath to Bruce. Here goes Bruce up the middle. 20, down to the 10, towards the 5, spin move, Bruce, end zone, touchdown, oh my! And Damon Allen is professional football's all-time leading passer, surpassing Warren Moon, as we've just witnessed Damon Allen do what no other quarterback has done in the history of the game. My good friend Anthony, Ronnie Lancaster held the record for 22 seasons before I broke it in 2000, and that was only 50,000 yards. I put the mark to 72,000 plus yards, and I can't even hold it for three seasons. It really shows your dedication and your commitment to your craft. Congratulations on becoming the all-time leading passer in Canadian Football League history and football in general. A job well done. Et au premier rang, Anthony Calvillo. Bonjour. This is Chris Berman of ESPN. Je m'appelle Chris Berman de ESPN. A hearty congratulations to Anthony Calvillo for being pro football's all-time leading passer in yards. Now, we've always enjoyed watching you, uh, the man I affectionately call the Kurt Warner of Canada. You've won multiple Grey Cups and won many more hearts by the dignified way that you fought and beat cancer. And now, you've reached the unreachable star. Incroyable. Félicitations, Anthony, and merci pour toutes les saisons de grandeur. Anthony, tu es incroyable. You are one of the best players to ever play this game, but you're even a finer human being. You inspire all of us, and just please, please keep on playing. Make it a few more years. Felicitations.
Et maintenant, donnons la parole à Ray Lalonde, président et chef de la direction des Alouettes de Montréal. Bonjour à tous. D'abord, au nom de M. Wettenor et de toute la famille des Alouettes, je voudrais féliciter Anthony Calvillo encore une fois. Bravo, Anthony. Anthony a joué pendant 18 saisons dans la Ligue canadienne, dont 14 avec les Alouettes. Quel privilège de l'avoir avec nous depuis 14 ans. Anthony, congratulations on behalf of Mr. Wettenhall and all of the Alouettes family for this incredible moment. Good job. Merci, M. Cohan et Lalonde. Et surtout, félicitations, Anthony Calvillo. Et maintenant, en route pour 80 000 verres. Seventy-two, three, eight, two, and counting. And what a spectacular way to set the mark. A 50-yard touchdown strike to Jamel Richardson on the final play of the third quarter. Still got some football to play here. But the Montreal Alouettes have established a 10-point lead as we head to the fourth quarter on a record-setting day in Montreal. Speed Weekend on TSN and TSN2. Friday night, it's the Nationwide Series from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And later, it's qualifying for the Korean Grand Prix on TSN. Saturday, the